Hello, David from Guitarist Magazine here, and today we are looking at a couple of JWJ guitars made by a luthier who's new to the scene, effectively, uh, called Rich Jones up there in Shropshire. He's been building for about four or five years professionally, although he's been um, building for about 20 years all in all. And um, he bought us these two guitars up and we were quite bowled over by them, to be quite honest. So starting off with the smaller of the two, which Rich calls a, a parlour guitar, but it, it, it has that, that sort of double O vibe to, the, to it, really. It's a, a bit bigger than a, a parlour would normally be. You've got a bigger lower bout and everything. Um, if anybody's already noticed that it joins at the 13th fret, we'll be talking about that in a moment. But first of all, I'll just run through what the um, body woods are. Top premium woods. They're re really, really nice. The, the top is antiqued cedar, which is, is not only baked, um, as we're getting used to now with uh, acoustic guitars, it's also um, had some sort of chemical process which has antiqued it. So we're used to cedar being that sort of uh, reddish colour, but this is this has actually gone more sort of light brown. So it, re it looks like a piece of antique furniture, effectively. On the back, we've got some very nice, highly figured walnut, which is uh, really lovely, actually. I don't know whether this is coming across on, on camera but it's got lots of uh, lovely figuring in the wood. Um, while we're on the back we'll talk about the the neck which is Honduran mahogany which again is an excellent tone wood. The fingerboard on this one is ebony, African ebony. Got slotted headstock, clues and tuners, um, saddle, nut are made of bone um, very nice inlays too, um, abalone inlays. Um, let's talk about the 13th fret joint. Um, it's slightly unusual, although uh, Martin has done it on one of their fairly recent models. Um, quite a few luthiers will join at the 12th fret, which is traditional. It's the sort of classical guitar norm. Um, and was the norm for steel strings up until the early part of the last century. Um, then you'll also join uh, the 14th fret, which is another you know, tradition which Martin introduced, the Martin Guitar Company introduced. The advantage of having a 12th fret join is it puts the bridge on the wider part of the, the top, which makes it more resonant. But Rich told us that the 12th felt a little bit claustrophobic. The 14th put the neck a little bit further down, down in that direction. And so he decided to split the difference and go for the 13th. And while you might think, oh, that's going to put me off, honestly, it doesn't. I've been playing this guitar for not very long and it doesn't bother me at all. So, uh, and Realistically speaking, without looking, if you could tell me which fret uh, Les Paul joins the body at, it doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter at all. Okay, so what else do we know about this? Um, I think I pointed out maybe the volute, which is, is probably quite difficult to uh, uh, come out on camera, but I'm sure we'll manage to do it. Um, and apart, apart from that, it's just a really, really nice, well-made instrument, totally handmade. The, the binding, the, the kerfing inside and everything is really excellent, premium, premium quality. And for a guitar this size, it's got uh, a lot of bass end. It doesn't it doesn't go to that boxiness that you sometimes get with a small body. So you've got a very, very full-throated sort of...
it'll take strumming really, really well. It'll... It'll do finger style really, really nicely as well. Pretty much one of the most versatile guitars I've, I've come across recently, to be, to be quite honest. So, without further ado, let's look at the OM Cutaway. Over to the OM Cutaway now. One thing I should mention is that both these guitars are hand-finished in nitro. So, um, very, very thin satin nitro finish, which um, is very apparent the minute you open the case because you can nitro has got a very very distinctive um, smell so again for a, for a sole builder to actually use nitro finish it's unusual but it's great it's a, it's a lovely sort of asset to have the other thing um, is that both these guitars are very light as well and I asked Rich about that and he said it's purely for the point of view of resonance and it adds resonance and he said I like light guitars fair enough they certainly work for me um, okay so what can I tell you about the OM we'll run through the wood of uh, the woods as we did before uh, the top is Sitka Sitka spruce uh, torrified um, very very nice very tight grain pattern and everything which is lovely it's exactly what we're looking for lovely sort of herringbone binding around the outside uh, this time we've got a, a rosewood board but it's still a honduran mahogany neck again clues and tuners bone saddle bone nut um, back and sides are indian rosewood again nicely nicely book matched very attractive grain pattern and you've also got the rosewood on the um, heel cap there as well again we have the lute exactly as we did on the the other guitar um, pickups for both the guitars are optional rich will put them in um, he's got his own particular favorites uh, one is an lr bags and the other one's slipped my mind but uh, read the review they're both in there so what else what else can i tell you about this again om's lovely sort of body size uh this will take chords <laughs> with no problem at all and also finger style as well it's a very very musical instrument this is something that everybody who's picked it up has noticed it's a it seems to have all the right notes on it if you see what i mean some acoustics you pick them up and they may they may be harsh in the trebles or or it's got um, no bass end, but this is, has got got the lock basically. It's very very nice, uh, nice well balanced guitar. <laughs> Lots of sustain as well, and bags of overtones. So now we've looked at the guitars in detail, it's time for some more sound bites. <laughs> 